today, Jesus talks about the number one or 99, the significance that one has over 99. He tells them the parable about the lost sheep, uh, how the good shepherd goes to look for the lost sheep until he finds it. Jesus is a good, a good shepherd. We are the sheep. You know, I remember one time I went uh, with these friends of mine, this couple, their daughter had run away. And so we went looking for her. And I would go to, they would drive me to the house and I would go and look in the windows and see if the little girl was there. And so we, we spent the night going from house to house where they thought she might be. And we didn't find her. But that's what Jesus is talking about. How disappointing it is when you don't find what you're looking for. When you don't find that lost sheep. And he said there'll be more rejoicing in heaven or one sinner that repents than over 99 righteous people that have no need for repentance. Have you ever turned your have you ever turned your back on God? The Israelis in the first reading, they turned their back on God, did they not? They created what? A golden calf. So they could worship that golden calf. But they created that golden calf because you know, Moses went up the mount, Mount Sinai, to, to get the Ten Commandments. And he was gone for such a long time, they became impatient. They created a golden calf as their God, as they worshipped it, right? They worshipped it as their God that had brought them out of the captivity in Egypt. But it was God who had brought them out. That's why he was so infuriated with the people because he was the one that had liberated them and now they created a golden calf to worship. What is your golden calf? My golden calf was when I was younger I used to love to work. It wasn't Jesus, others, and then me. It was me, others, and then Jesus on the bottom. Yeah, that was my that was my golden calf work. And in the second reading, St. Paul talks about being Jesus inviting him to the ministry. To be part of ministry. Because he remembers St. Paul was what? He was a persecutor of Christians. He would search them down, get them out of their houses, and turn them in. But uh, uh, Jesus called him to ministry life. And he knew that he wasn't worth being a minister of Christ. And just like, like St. Paul says that he, you know, he had the opportunity to become part of ministry, Christ's ministry. I remember when uh, a Franciscan brother came and asked me to be part of a ministry group. It was a part of a ministry group that catered to senior citizens. And I've been part of it. We've maintained that group ever since. It was about 92. 1992 that I became part of the ministry group 
And see, St. Paul talks about Jesus welcoming you with, with open arms. And so, he welcomed me, even though I worshiped that, that golden calf. And I was, I was welcomed into the ministry life. And I've been part of ministry life ever since. And the part of that, that same ministry, I try to continue working in that ministry area where I visit the elderly, I visit the, the sick, hospitals, nursing homes, things like that. And so St. Paul is welcome with open arms. We too, we too are welcome with our open arms. So even though we have a golden calf in our lives, we can always ask God for forgiveness, that he will let us back to being part of his children, because we're all, we're all children of God. We stray a little bit sometimes, sometimes for a long time, sometimes for a short time, but, you know, God is always there. God is always there, always there with open arms. You know, Pope Francis says, don't be afraid to ask God for forgiveness. He never tires of forgiving us. He is true mercy. Today is anointing. We celebrate the sacrament of anointing, so just like St. Paul says, don't be afraid to ask God not only for forgiveness,